All right, hello and welcome to another episode of Moose's Gear Goo Review. I'm Moose, and today we're doing a knife review on the ZT770. The ZT770. So I'm going to read you some specs and talk a little bit about this knife. All right, so specs are um, the overall length is 7.57 inches. The blade length is three and a quarter inches long. Uh, the blade thickness is 0.12 inches thick. The overall handle length, or the handle length is 4.32 inches. And the handle thickness is 0.4 six inches thick so it's just under half an inch thick and the weight on this guy is 3.7 ounces which isn't bad it's a decently lightweight solid feeling knife all right so let's talk about this then um this is my first and only zt knife that i own um, some of my friends have some of the other zt models that are pretty cool zt is Owned by Kai Industries, uh, who are also the owners of Kershaw. So a lot of times if you see a ZT knife, they Kershaw usually has a model that's similar to it or vice versa. Uh, so they share a lot of the same designers and collaborations with designers. Which is really nice because then that usually gives you a higher end knife like the ZT line. Uh, as well as getting a model uh, with similar similar knife features or shapes um, for a budget more budget friendly price. Um, uh, that being said, this is the ZT line. This is the 770. It is a uh, flipper design only. As you can see, there's no thumb studs or holes for deployment. It is a flipper, and you have the flipper on the back side, and it is a assist opening so it has um, the speed safe assist opening and just close it boom okay the um, blade is flat ground yes it is a flat ground blade plain edge blade it is a stone wash finish the blade steel on this is the high-end Elmax steel, which is a good steel. It holds a really long, an edge a really long time. It's, it's uh, more difficult to sharpen. The only thing is, in really cold temperatures, I've heard um, that uh, the blade steel can get kind of brittle um, and can then chip. So you just want to be careful if you're using it in really cold temperatures. Um, you know, but just like any knife, you need to respect the knife. So you shouldn't be just like slamming this thing around. You know, use it as a tool and take care of it, um, and it'll treat you fine. Um, the handles are the handle scales are actually aluminum, anodized aluminum black, um, which is really nice. You know, it's a very solid feeling uh, to it, but yet it still maintains a lighter weight. It is open pillar construction with these really nice black uh, pillars there. Uh, they don't have a lanyard hole, but they have this small pin at the back where you can attach your lanyard there. Um, it is a liner lock. And so the liner is recessed into the frame of the aluminum frame. And... Even though it's a spring assist, you really can't tell where the mechanism is hidden. All you see is the liner lock. But if you look carefully, there is a small panel in there. And that is where the um, mechanism for the spring assist is. This operates with uh, bronze washers, uh, which keep it pretty smooth when opening and closing. Um... It has a deep carry pocket clip with the ZT logo 
and it's reversible left right tip up only okay so it's pretty cool little knife definitely edcable uh, I was pretty surprised actually with the amount of cutting edge and the size of the blade uh, for a knife this size and as you look the tip of the blade literally goes down to basically the very tip of the handle so they fit a really long blade uh, into a fairly compact little handle and stuff the tip does terminate to a fairly fine point which makes it great for finer covering but it is a little bit longer so it's hard to kind of get that tip control but it's doable and because it's flat ground and fairly thin it does make this a very good slicer uh, it also works great on cardboard no problem and it's just a pretty cool little cutter now this does come in in an even more higher end model that ZT makes and I'm not sure what the blade steel on it on it is I believe it's LMAX as well but they also have a carbon fiber model so it'd be 770 CF uh, is the other model and that actually makes the knife sub three ounces I believe um, so if you like the look of this one, but you want something a little bit nicer or even lighter, check out the carbon fiber model of this. Uh, we're going to compare it then to some other uh, knives just so you can comparison, get a comparison of the size. So we have the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. We have the... Benchmade X or HK, not Benchmade HNK uh, Axis, and we have our Bird Raven 2. So, as you can see, um, the knife blade is pretty long uh, compared to the handles. If you compare just the cutting edges, it's actually a tie with the H and K knife, um, but they're all pretty comparable. I'd say these are mid to large size uh, folders. Um, the interesting thing, though, is if you look at the handle length, um, it has the same length as the H and K, but then the HK handle is actually longer so it's pretty interesting to look how that works so the knife blades are more or less the same size but when you look at the size of the handles somehow it fits that that long blade into this smaller handle which is pretty impressive so I lined them up, and as you can see, it's not touching my hand. Or maybe I can do it this way. Okay. So the other handles are about a half inch longer. So it's pretty impressive. A really unique design there. Uh, and blade widths, you know, smaller than the Agent K, smaller, thinner than the um, than all of these knives. So. Um, but that's all right. It's more of a slicer, so pretty neat. That being said, we got one last knife test, and that is the ugly brown glove test. So we got our grip. So now just saying the aluminum handles don't have a huge amount of tra traction. I would say they're matted, but even with the glove, you know, it's not bad right now. But, you know, it's something that you might want to consider because it's not the grippiest. Um, remember, there's no thumb stud so it's a flipper uh, and there's no jimping or anything on that flipper so well, okay fits pretty good it's a little hard to get to the liner lock 
um, just because it's recessed in there and there isn't a huge cutout to get to it. But in these gloves, I am able to feel it and disengage it. And the handle is a little short. It's for sure a three full three finger grip, but my pinky is kind of hanging off the end there. So if you have bigger hands and you want a full four finger grip, this might not be the knife for you. <clears throat> All right, guys. So that being said, um, this is a pretty neat little knife. It's a cool knife. Definitely a slicer if you're into slicers. Uh, if you're a ZT fan, you know, definitely collect it. Uh, I feel like the price has recently dropped on this. Whereas before it was like a hundred and thirty dollar knife, I just saw it online for a hundred and twenty. Um, so it sounds like the price is going down on this, and it's definitely a good entry level ZT knife if you're trying to get into ZTs. I don't like buying expensive knives, and I would have to say this is one of the few expensive knives I own, and that's expensive for me um, because I feel like I could get just as much work done with a. $50 knife as I could a $200 knife so but that's just the way I roll um, but it's definitely a neat knife I'd say it's worth the money that I paid for it um, so but because it's not doesn't fit my hand all the way and because of the blade being more of a slicer it's not necessarily my cup of tea so I would give this knife a solid four out of five um, I don't know, just, I'd give it a solid four out of five. So, I mean, a lot of people will like this, uh, knife and I like it as well, but it, I prefer some other knives over it. That being said, check out the eye in the upper right hand corner, like, subscribe, comment, uh, and stay tuned or check back in for other reviews of knife, knives, camping gear, and my Cairn box unboxing. Thank you guys. Have a good night.